Anthem for Doomed Youth by Wilfred Owen, written in 1917. From the introduction to Poems by Wilfred Owen by Siegfried Sassoon. In writing an introduction such as this, it is good to be brief. The poems printed in this book need no preliminary commendations from me or anyone else. The author has left us his own fragmentary but impressive foreword. This and his poems can speak for him, backed by the authority of his experience as an infantry soldier and sustained by nobility and originality of style. All that was strongest in Wilfred Owen survives in his poems. Any superficial impressions of his personality, any records of his conversation, behavior, or appearance would be irrelevant and unseemly. The curiosity which demands such morsels would be incapable of appreciating the richness of his work. The importance of his contribution to the literature of the war cannot be decided by those who, like myself, both admired him as a poet and valued him as a friend. His conclusions about war are so entirely in accordance with my own that I cannot attempt to judge his work with any critical detachment. I can only affirm that he was a man of absolute integrity of mind. He never wrote his poems, as so many war poets did, to make the effect of a personal gesture. He pitied others. He did not pity himself. In the last year of his life, he attained a clear vision of what he needed to say, and these poems survive him as his true and splendid testament. Wilfred Owen was born at Oswestry on March 18, 1893. He was educated at the Birkenhead Institute and matriculated at London University in 1910. In 1913, he obtained a private tutorship near Bordeaux, where he remained until 1915. During this period, he became acquainted with the eminent French poet Laurent Teilhard, to whom he showed his early verses and from whom he received considerable encouragement. In 1915, in spite of delicate health, he joined the Artists' Rifles, OTC, was gazetted to the Manchester Regiment, and served with their 2nd Battalion in France from December 1916 to June 1917, when he was invalided home. Fourteen months later, he returned to the Western Front and served with the same battalion, ultimately commanding a company. He was awarded the Military Cross for gallantry, while taking part in some heavy fighting on October 1st. He was killed on November 4th, 1918, while endeavouring to get his men across the Samba Canal. A month before his death, he wrote to his mother, My nerves are in perfect order. I came out again in order to help these boys, directly by leading them as well as an officer can, indirectly by watching their sufferings that I may speak of them as well as a pleader can. Let his own words be his epitaph. Courage was mine, and I had mystery. Wisdom was mine, and I had mastery. Siegfried Sassoon Preface by Wilfred Owen This book is not about heroes. English poetry is not yet fit to speak of them. Nor is it about deeds or lands, nor anything about glory, honor, dominion, or power, except war. Above all, this book is not concerned with poetry. The subject of it is war, and the pity of war. The poetry is in the pity. Yet these elegies are not to this generation. This is in no sense consolatory. They may be to the next. All the poet can do today is to warn. That is why the true poets must be truthful. If I thought the letter of this book would last, I might have used proper names. But if the spirit of it survives Prussia, my ambition and those names will be content, for they will have achieved themselves fresher fields than Flanders. Anthem for Doomed Youth by Wilfred Owen What passing bells for those who die as cattle! Only the monstrous anger of the guns! Only the stuttering rifle's rapid rattle Can patter out their hasty orisons! No mockeries now for them! No prayers nor bells! Nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, The shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells! And bugles calling for them from sad shires! What candles may be held to speed them all? Not in the hand of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall, their flowers the tenderness of patient minds, and each slow dusk a drawing down of blinds.